In the United States of America, one of the biggest babyface things you can do is show some love for your country, brother. And that's something that pro wrestling does better than anyone else. And through the years, a few good men and the honorable anthems that flag them have truly represented all that the home of the Whopper has to offer. That being said, I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes. And with apologies to all you foreign fanatics out there, let's all pledge allegiance to the top 10 most patriotically American entrance themed songs ever. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard the ho train. Hacksaw, Jim Duggan's relentless patriotism and devotion to old glory certainly made him one of the all-time fan favorites during his wrestling career. Now this theme song, named after his trusty chunk of wood, doesn't exactly hold up to the greats that we'll cover throughout this list. However, Duggan was able to make this tune sound more patriotic than it normally would be because if you're going to scream USA at the top of your lungs, then that's got to count for something, right? A cross between Captain America and a prehistoric caveman, the Hacksaw character was never the sharpest tool in the shed, but the fans loved him anyway. The winner of the very first Royal Rumble, Duggan was rarely in contention for any WWE championships, but that didn't bother the tough guy who was just proud to be an American. Ho! In the early days of Vince McMahon's national WWF expansion, he plucked brothers-in-law Barry Windham and Mike Rotundo to help him build a program around patriotism versus evil foreigners just in time for the inaugural WrestleMania. Dubbed the U.S. Express, Windham and Rotundo were also only a handful of sports entertainers to have entrance music at the time, with Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA helping to parade them into battle. Now, if you investigate the boss's lyrics here, you'll find that this song is hardly the anthem for American pride one would assume based on the title. It's actually a complex protest song, but we're not going to overthink it or bring politics into this. So basically, it just made the list. Now in this politically charged era that we live in, patriotism can have a dark side. And we're not referring to Doug Gilbert's run as the Dark Patriot. Originally debuting in the WWE as the All-American American, Jack Swagger wasn't so much patriotic as he was a cocky, egotistical varsity jock whose status as an elite collegiate athlete made him superior to everyone in every way. Later in his WWE career, Swagger's character would devolve into that of an anti immigrant as he joined forces with Cesaro and their manager Zeb Coulter, aka Dirty Dutch Mantel, to form the Real Americans. Now their theme was a certifiable USA headbanger that helped get the We the People chant over like Rover. But nowadays, the Jericho Appreciation Society member can thank his sports entertainment stablemate for officially burying the Real American gimmick and declaring We the People sucks, thus tying a bow on the stumble and stagger of the WWE career of Jack. Swagger. After such a tumultuous year playing an Iraqi sympathizer that led to real-life threats against him and his family, Sergeant Slaughter sought forgiveness and a strong desire to get his country back through a series of emotional promos and vignettes. Now, wrestling fans were more than happy to oblige, and Sarge returned to his good guy roots. But being the bad guy took a lot out of him, and he went on a much-needed respite. After this hiatus, Slaughter returned to TV in 1997 with a new hardcore theme to boot when he assumed the role of W. WWE Commissioner, where he was determined to try his best to control the chaos created by the newly formed faction D-Generation X. The lone WCW entry on this list, former six-time, six-time, six-time world champion and two-time WWE Hall of Famer inductee Booker T's first gimmick in wrestling came from finding an old army hat while working in an abandoned self-storage unit at around the time of the beginning of the Gulf War. From there, the Booker Man would adopt the moniker of G.I. Bro, America's greatest hero. Years later, Booker reprised this role late in his WCW career and was 
given this Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart produced theme, which prominently features another Jimmy, that being a Jimi Hendrix-esque electric guitar version of the Star Spangled Banner being played amongst a fleet of helicopter propellers. Now this theme will surely fire you up and have you ready to take a grenade for the USNA, but it might also make you want to get to the chopper. This glorious entrance music that most associate with Kurt Angle was first used by the most generic patriotic wrestler of all time, hence his name, The Patriot. Heck, even Mr. America is a better name. But still, although the fans will always remember The Patriot, this theme song was leveled up just a year later when it was bestowed upon a legitimate NCAA wrestling champion and the only Olympic gold medalist in pro wrestling history led to the ring by the bombastic horns that introduce metal. When we liked this theme, we loved it. When we hated the theme, well, it sucked, no matter how many times it was remixed. Either way, the theme and Angle himself have both overcome adversity in true American underdog fashion. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. From the moment that Hulkamania was born, when he defeated the Iron Sheik for the WWF title, Hulk Hogan was as much a symbol of America as the Armed Forces, Major League Baseball, and your mom's apple pie. Marching to the ring amidst the adulation of his Hulkamaniacs, often with Old Glory in tow, and the strains of Rick Derringer's Real American blaring from arena sound systems, Hogan was a beacon of light for patriotism, so it was natural for him to feud with such foreign adversaries like Killer Khan, Kamala, the Uganda and giant and Yoko Zuna. With his 24-inch pythons and coked-up charisma, Hogan preached about working hard, saying your prayers, and eating your vitamins. This mantra, plus his patriotic persona, firmly sculpted the Hulkster onto the Mount Rushmore of wrestling and as a fixture of American folklore. Composed in 1908, and as the official United States Army song, the caissons go rolling along, trumpeted the arrival of another all-American good guy who the WWF desperately needed to defend our country's honor after Sergeant Slaughter left the company over a dispute surrounding his involvement with G.I. Joe. Corporal Kirshner, a true son of America, and a man with an outstanding military record as a real-life member of the Army's 82nd Airborne Division, is best remembered for his memorable rivalry with the hated Russian villain Nikolai Volkov that culminated in a flag match victory for Kirshner at WrestleMania 2. But unfortunately, personal problems and a messy divorce caused the corporal and this patriotic theme to roll along right out of the Fed after just one year. Perhaps no superstar was pushed so hard and so fast than Lex Luger was after Hulk Hogan's WWF departure in 1993. Poised to pick up where the Hulkster left off, Luger arrived via helicopter to the deck of the USS Intrepid on America's birthday to body slam, well, basically hip toss, the 600 plus pound heavyweight champion Yokozuna. Cementing himself as one of the good guys now, Luger became an American original, bathed in patriotic decor. He quickly embarked on the now infamous Lex Express nationwide tour, traveling the country in a red, white, and blue painted bus, shaking hands, and kissing babies. Now, although Luger did go on to become a co-winner of the 1994 Royal Rumble and co-main event WrestleMania 10, for all intents and purposes, the Lex Express had officially crashed and burned. And unfortunately, not even Stars and Stripes Forever. The feel-good, all-American, patriotic song could salvage the man that Vince McMahon had hoped would lead the WWF's new generation. For decades, 
Sergeant Slaughter has been the ultimate wrestling portrayal of the glory of the U.S. Armed Forces. The Sarge and his chin are instantly recognizable American icons to wrestling fans. However, what not everyone knows is that Slaughter's initial WWF run was that of a brutal, bullying drill instructor. Using this official hymn performed by the United States Marine Corps Band as an entrance theme, Sarge would scream at fans to stand and salute him, all the while referring to his out matched opponents as scum, slime, and maggots. Now this was nothing compared to the nuclear heat he generated when he sided with Saddam Hussein and the country of Iraq during the Gulf War in the early 90s. But still, some folks credit this tune as being one of the first pieces of entrance music ever used in pro wrestling. And now you are all dismissed.